Today we're going to talk about how to get a painting that's pretty good to be very good. And we're going to do that using an app, a free app, which I will show you later in this video. So let's get started. So before we can talk about how to uh, make a painting better, we have to paint the painting. Sort of the cart before the horse kind of thing. So let's do a quick review. This is putting in Naples yellow instead of using uh, white out or some sort of masking fluid. So those are just reminders. I don't want to paint over those. Those are not going to be white necessarily, but they're going to be my lightest lights. And here's how typically watercolors people do skies upside down. Not, I, I don't wet my paper ahead of time. I'm always working on dry, wet paint into dry paper. All right, so things are pretty well established right there. I always need to get away from the white of the paper because I have nothing to respond to. Now I have something to respond to. Anything that I put in that's light, I'm already making sure to add more color to it. By color, I mean I've established where my lights were, and I decided that those light areas are not white, but they're actually yellow, and that's because the barn is painted yellow. There are a lot of shapes in this barn. It's kind of a challenge. Uh, now, what works nicely is the complement to uh, yellow is violet. So I get to play a lot with violet here, and I'm using a triad. I use ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, and a little bit of a burnt sienna. All those three colors are going in these blocks that I'm putting in. With a pretty large brush, probably a size, I want to say it's almost a size 20 brush would be my guess. No, it can't be a 20. It's got to be a little bit smaller than that. But later I bring in the 20 for the sky. So you can see that there's a lot of color. Three different colors are going into those uh, sides of the barn. Whoops, sorry about that. I must have knocked the camera. Now I'm working on a 12 by 12 inch square, which I'm really, I love squares. <laughs> I just do. And this is arch paper, cold pressed. Now I know that those windows are darker than anything else. So I've mixed up that same triad, ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, and, and alizarin crimson and made them into one color and that's what I put in those windows. Up at the top it's a little bit lighter so that's more of a burnt sienna. So I'm sticking with these same colors as, as I work through and that will provide consistency in the painting. Now I notice one thing which was this real highlight at the top where the cupola is that orange spot which shows in the picture. Now what I always say about pictures is I'm not matching my, my painting to the photograph. Photographs are always lighter where it's light and darker where it's dark. So I have to compensate for that. So I'm matching value but not color. And the other real tricky thing here is yellow. If you, you know, making a yellow darker tends to make it browner and I want to retain a certain intensity. I want my yellow to read as yellow. So I've had to bend it a little bit by putting in some quinacridone gold instead of yellow. Now I don't feel like the sky is sufficient, so I'm going to go back over and give that a second coat. Here's where my number 20 brush comes in. I need the freedom of that. Now the sky is very reflected in the top of the barn. Even though that's snow at the top of the barn, it's reflecting the sky, so it's very blue. The snow, everyone thinks, well, of course, snow is white. I mean, if you put it in your hand, it's white. But generally, it's full of color. It's full of um, violets, blues, pinks. Whatever's happening in the sky is going to be happening in the snow. And then, depending on where a shadow is, you've got to compensate for that as well. So I'm just paying attention, like I always do, to shapes. I'm not even thinking about the barn. I never think about the thing I'm painting. I'm just looking at the different shapes and seeing can I match value and shape and then compare value and shape as I go along so that things stay relatively dark in uh, relationship to each other and relatively light. And then what I also try to do is use as few strokes as possible because that's just something that I enjoy to do. So here's where I took a break. I got about this far and I felt like this painting is not where I wanted to be. It's not intense enough. So I know my value relationships are good, but I'm going to intensify the color. And in order to do that, I'm putting in a second coat in some places and also adding more quinacridone gold. 
to some of where my yellows were. But for the most part, what it is is I'm not making new decisions. I'm just reinforcing decisions that I already made with the second coat. Everything from the first coat is still going to show through. And I'm kind of dancing around the paper there. And once again, just didn't feel like the sky was measuring up. I got to do something about that. So I go back in. All right, so this is about where I decided to stop because I felt like I was very close to the effect I wanted. This is what it currently, let's see, is this, yeah, this is what it looked like. And I felt like it wasn't quite where I wanted it to be. And you probably have this happen with your paintings a lot. It's not that there's something wrong, but it's just, you just haven't landed that plane yet. And so I thought I would show you an app that I use that helps me to do that. It's called Markup. It's free. I have the paid version, which is $1.99. It allows me to do a little bit more. And what I was able to do is take the painting that I'm currently working on and looking at what would happen if I made some of what I consider to be the darker areas darker. And it gives me a variety of colors in order to choose from in order to do that. And so I was able to put those in. And I already right there felt like, OK, that's a good pattern. I like that. So now I'm going to show you them side by side. There we go. There's the one on the left, the one before I did markup and made a decision to make things uh, darker in those areas, and then after, which is the final painting. So sometimes using an app will be really helpful, because who wants to sit and paint the same thing over and over again? Uh, better to stick with something that's eh, kind of okay and work it through. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paint's wet, mass for value, mix for color, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.